हाँ जी गुड इवनिंग बच्चों क्या आवा यू ऑल गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सुरभि मनन मुन्ना नीरज योगेश गुड इवनिंग गाइस गुड इवनिंग ओके सो लेट मी स्टार्ट लेट मी टेक यू टू माय स्क्रीन गुड इवनिंग This cough is getting just worse. I don't know why. Okay. Can you see my screens? Everyone can just send a quick yes. Can you just send a quick yes? Okay, very good. Class. Number two. Today is twelfth of March, twenty twenty three, and we're doing corporation. Okay, so we'll continue with what we where we left yesterday. Okay, right now. what is the due date for payment of tax so payment of tax has to be 9 months and one day in general course right but there is a concept of large companies so generally if this is your ap this is your accounting period say you prepared accounts from uh, 1st of april to 31st of march Twenty two to twenty three, and now when do you need to make make the payment? Nine months and one day. So when do you need to make the payment? Tell me in the regular course for companies which are not large companies. Yes, when do you need to make the payment? Nine months and one day. You need to make payment of corporation tax. of corporation tax in 9 months and nine months and one day so what will be i think there was some issue so 9 months and one day is the time when you need to give the make the payment right very good next is payment of 
tag. So let's read, let's read also. It's very important. So what is the due date for companies that are not large nine months and one day after the end of AP, but for large companies, they have a quarterly installment payment. And I'll tell you how that is done, right? And the payment will start during, during the accounting period. So it will be seventh month, seven, 10, 13 and 16, seven, 10, 13 and 16 months, right? So that will be the installment. So your installment for large companies and what are large companies, large companies. Large companies whose augmented profits are augmented profit. So this is another concept, which I need to tell you what is augmented profit. So where augmented profits are greater than 1.5 million, but up to 20 million pounds. They always will always be talking in pounds as far as UK tax is concerned. So large companies are the companies where augmented profits are greater than 1.5 million. So they need to make payment in installments. So what will be the installments? The installments are going to be seventh month, 14th day of 14th day of seventh month, 10th month, 13th month and 16th month. So these are the installments and always you make payment on the 14th day as far as this is concerned. Okay. So now let us come back. Do you want to make a note of this? Yes. Do you want to make a note of this because everything is written only, but in case you want to make a note, you'll obviously get this. But you'll obviously get these notes. So not a problem. So these are the installments which you need to pay installment payment for large companies. There is installment payment. So of what are the large companies? Large companies are where augmented profit is more than 1.5 million up to 20 million. Yes. Everyone repeat with me. Augment large companies are the companies where augmented profit is greater than Yes. Quickly tell me greater than <laughs> come on. Augmented profits are greater than 1.5 million up to 20 million. So then installment payment system has to be there An installment has to be in which months, 7th, 10th, 13th, 16th. It has to be. 7, 10, 13, then 16. So in the 12-month period. Just take from your house seven. We'll come to that man. We'll come to that 20 greater than 20 million. Then we'll come to that How seven. Just take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then 10th month. Then after 12th month will be 13th month. And then after 13th month, 14, 15, then 16. Suppose your uh, period ends on 31st of March. The so first payment is going to be when seventh month, this is April, May, June, July, August, September, October. So 14th of October, then sir, 10th month. So 10th month is going to be 
एट नाइन टेन सो दिस इज ऑक्टोबर नवंबर डिसम्बर जैनवरी देन आफ्टर जैनवरी थर्टींथ मंथ थर्टीन मंथ इज एप्रिल देन आफ्टर एप्रिल सिक्सटीन मंथ एप्रिल मे जून एप्रिल इज थर्टीन थर्टीन फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन सो एप्रिल मे जून जुलाई सो जुलाई विल बी योर लास्ट डेट ऑफ पेमेंट ओके Yes. Okay. Now, let's come back and read. Now, all companies must pay their corporation tax electronically. This is nothing new. Even in India, we are making payment. Manan, you are into practice, and you must be knowing that we make payment of corporation tax electronically. And there are penalties for late payment of tax. See, large. companies where augmented profit so sir what is augmented profit sir specialized way <coughs> taxation is always on ttp but sir augmented profit it has to be calculated when we add your dividend from non group companies right sir for that we need to know what is a group company okay we'll study what is a group company but where augmented profit for the accounting period is more than profit threshold of 1.5 million but it is less than 20 million right so if you have companies with augmented profit of no more than 1.5 million you are not large and therefore you are required to pay the corporation tax you are not required to you are not required to pay the corporation tax by installment so then you'll pay what is the date of payment yes quickly for non large companies quickly tell me For non-large companies, who will tell me? I just did it with you. Non-large company, nine month and one day. So nine months means whenever you are AP ends from that date to nine months and one day. Okay. How do we calculate? So we what we do is. we take ttp ttp is taxable total profit and we add all the dividends that you have received add dividend but that dividend should be from a non group company now you need to understand what is a group company does anyone understand what is a group company yes anybody who understands what is a group company yes tell me let's see how much is your knowledge from accounting subsidiary company yes holding and subsidiary yes so that forms a group but can you have more than one company more than two companies in a group <coughs> you add dividend okay so suppose but there is a rule let me let me first ask you and then i'll tell you uh, uh, suppose there are two companies let me just write this dividend from non group companies non group companies okay okay suppose we've got two companies a b and c so a holds 75% in b and b holds 51% in c will you say that a b and c will form a group do a b and c form a group yes how many say yes neeraj is saying yes munna is saying yes surbhi is saying yes what about the others manan man what about you they also they form a group yes as far as your accounting is concerned they are in a group but here there is a rule that the for them to be in a group the effective holding effective holding should be greater than 
परसेंट नाउ टेल मी आर दे इन अ ग्रुप यू मल्टीप्लाय सेवेंटी फाइव इंटू फिफ्टी वन वॉट डू यू गेट वेट so in this case what is the effective or effective holding effective holding is 0.38 <coughs> absolutely you guess so effective holding is 0.38 and therefore the this is c will not form form part of the group but if i now say that b holds another example a b c a holds 100% of b and b holds 75% of c now tell me does c form part of the group or not yes sir because if you see this the indirect holding is 75% <clears throat> okay right so this is the effective holding part now let us talk about the dividend received now any dividend that is received from uk and overseas companies is exempt from corporation tax they can have an impact on whether a company is large and therefore whether corporation tax needs to be paid by installments okay what do we do <clears throat> so we what we do is that if you receive dividends it is exempt there is no taxation on dividends from any company right dividends are totally tax free but they need to be added right in added to ttp in order to arrive at the augmented profits but they have written only cash dividends right i don't know what they mean by non cash dividend so we will not get into that but any dividend we will add to come to the augmented profits right even if you have received dividend from overseas company you have to include it but they may have been subject to tax in the overseas country <coughs> is it right or not dividend received from overseas company has to be included but you must have paid tax you ignore that tax only actual cash received is included in the calculation that is why they have mentioned cash dividend okay there there is no other definition of cash dividend so that is why i cannot take you any further than this so whatever tax you have you have paid on that you will ignore that tax only actual cash that you have received okay then dividends received from related group companies are ignored so any related 51% group that is ignored okay now this 1.5 million is a threshold right so whenever what is a threshold can someone tell me what is a threshold <clears throat> what is a threshold yes so if after 80 after tax you are getting 80 so only 80 will be included neeraj if you are getting after tax you are getting 80 so only 80 will be included <coughs> now what is the threshold can someone tell me what is the threshold maximum limit or level very good
maximum limit or maximum level very very good okay so threshold means beyond beyond the point so in audit also you must have met this word which is threshold that beyond on this you are a large company but this 1.5 million threshold has to be adjusted suppose your accounting period is less than 12 months what do i do then i will suppose your accounting period is 10 months so i'll do 1.5 million multiplied by 10 divided by 12 okay so i will have to adjust this threshold suppose your accounting period is just 9 months so what will i do so multiplied by 9 divided by 12 okay yes is this understood or you need me to <coughs> clarify more on this so there are two things first of all do we have space here first of all the 1.5 million threshold suppose suppose what happens is that there is a short ap there is a short ap short accounting period what do i do so i take short or long counting period or long ap what do i do i take this 1.5 million multiply by duration of ap and divide by 12 months is that clear yes is that clear okay now if i have <coughs> group companies you have if i have group companies then sir what so what i will do is i will divide 1.5 million by the number of group companies number of group companies okay sir for long threshold amount will remain same ha hai na 1.5 million will always be there 1.5 million will remain same this 1.5 million does not change okay short or long i have written duration of ap it might be 15 months <coughs> then what do you do you take 12 months and 3 months yes or no when suppose it is a 16 month ap what do you do for a 16 month ap yesterday we did this yes for, for a 16 month ap what do you do you take 12 months one ap then four months right so then 1.5 million threshold will not matter in long ap if it's a short ap then it is going to matter okay then for short ap 1.5 million no then 1.5 million for long ap it is going to be 1.5 million for the short ap it will be 1.5 million into whatever amount duration is left divided by 12 months okay yes is this understood can i move forward in group company do we not need to in group company also you need to adjust 
for longer ap suppose your ap is 16 months your ap is 16 months so then what are you going to do sir i am going to divide this into 12 months and 4 months yes so for 12 months my threshold is 1.5 million only for 4 months what is my threshold 1.5 million into 4 by 12 okay <coughs> for longer ap yes munna you are absolutely right okay okay now this i have already told you so one is a 51% subsidiary of the other or both are 51 subsidiaries of a third company and there is also example of each situation that is given to you so how do you form a group so if a b a and b are subsidiaries or b and c's are subsidiary of a then they form a group okay so example h limited holds 100% of s limited H Limited holds seventy percent of S, eighty percent of S two, and fifty one percent of S three. Then all of these are group companies, right? Then <coughs> X Limited holds hundred percent of Y Limited and seventy percent of Z. So these are also related companies. H Limited holds seventy percent of S, and S Limited holds eighty percent of T. Now what is the effective effective interest yes between them what is the effective interest 56% so does t limited become part of the group or not yes sir absolutely t limited becomes part of the group because there is effective interest right so both are therefore both s limited and t limited are 51% subsidiaries of h limited okay this is simple now what will be included is this what is going to be included so in the 51% group companies right specifically any overseas resident company that also has to be included but what you exclude is a dormant company and a non trading holding company suppose you have a company which is just a holding company which does not do any business so that company has to be excluded if you have just one company that is in doing investment that is not a group company so you don't divide uh, by say if you have say five companies which are doing business sixth company is just a holding company so you don't divide by six then you divide by five because then non trading holding company is excluded dormant company is also excluded right now one very important thing <coughs> this is a, this is a, the next concept is very very important suppose space no suppose there is a b a limited and b limited right and c limited and during the year there is a new acquisition of d limited and during the year c limited goes away c limited is sold off or the shareholding is gone so during the year these two events happen during the year this is also d limited joins and c limited leaves the group so joining company the company which is joining the group 
so joining company will be deemed now what do they say what does the law say the law says that companies that join during the period are deemed to be part of the group from the beginning of the next accounting period which means that <coughs> joining company will be deemed to be to be part of the group from next ap not this ap the one you are considering the company which joins you will not consider that as part of the ap so your threshold is still larger right your threshold of 1.5 million is larger see always pay attention to the advisory part so if you are if you are this thing if your person is going to ask right sir what should i do i need to dispose of some shares from uh, this company i want to dispose of uh, will i have any benefit or not so you'll be able to tell them that leaving company will be considered or deemed to be part of the group for the ap so the company even if it's leaving during the ap it will be considered to be part of the group so what will you tell them that there is no point selling off right now because it will still be deemed to be part of this group okay and the company that is joining will become part of the group from, from the next ap okay so let us read are you able to understand this or not yes are you guys able to understand this or not apart from c s or b leaving company <coughs> will still be part of the group for this ap from next ap you will consider that they have left the group from the next ap so c limited in this case c limited will be considered to be part of this group till the till this accounting period okay yes everyone are you able to understand or not very good so companies that join the 51% group are deemed to be part of the group from beginning of the accounting period break of the following accounting period which is next accounting period companies that leave the 51% group during the accounting period will deem to still be part of the group until the end of the current accounting period which means till this period ends it will still be deemed that this company was part of the group right one very important thing another very important thing is that suppose there is an individual who owns 51% or in one company and 51% in another company will they be form part of the group no sir they have to be there must be a corporate parent corporate parent is very very important if an individual owns then that will not be a group okay yes is that clear you want to take some time and read whatever we have done till now you want to take some time and read whatever we have done till now or i can move on okay fine start from here giving you 2 3 minutes
डिविडेंड रिसीव्ड नॉट द डेट आई मीन इट इज फॉर द पीरियड नो फॉर द एपी वट एवर डिविडेंड इट इज रिसीव्ड इफ इट्स रिसीव ड्यूरिंग द एपी देन वील टेक इट डिविडेंड रिसीव विल मीन डिविडेंड इन द bank account whatever cash part is there that has to be taken only the cash part will be taken for calculation of your tt this augmented profits so any dividend that you receive from overseas companies included where does it say that it will be excluded so what they are trying to emphasize on is that the cash part is going to be included so they are exempt from corporate corporation tax there is no tax on that but to calculate this threshold you have to include okay it is exempt it will not be taxed but to calculate this threshold that you know whether you are a large company or not so if you are a large company you have to pay dividend you have to uh, file you have to make payment of income tax in installments otherwise you have to pay once in lump sum which is after 9 months and one day but to just determine this threshold whether you are a large company or not so for that purpose this dividend has to be included not that we are going to tax your dividend but just to uh, find out whether you are you are a large company or not we will include this dividend okay munna okay let me write this down for all of you let me write the note let me write a note for the purpose of i will suggest that you guys also write it down for the purpose of calculation of corporation tax liability <coughs> any dividend any dividend received from an overseas company is exempt but for calculation for calculation of large company threshold company threshold we will include the
dividend received the dividend received from such overseas company that is for calculation of the 1.5 million fish okay is that clear everyone yes very good now you can go through this okay first write this let me see
ओके आर यू डन गाइज यूर टेकिंग टू मच टाइम अभी वी डिसाइड ऑन टू मिनट्स एंड नाउ यू टेकन सो मच ऑफ टाइम हाँ Now, what is the consequence of the fifty-one percent group? We've already done that. So, first of all, to determine whether the company is large for paying corporation quarterly installment, right? So, this is first thing. Second is that any dividend received from these fifty-one percent group companies that is excluded from calculation of augmented profits. So, any dividend from group companies totally excluded. Okay. Understood. So two two consequences. One is that one point five million will be divided by these number of large companies. Second is second is that any dividend that is received that will not be included for calculation of augmented profits. Is that clear? Yes, people. very good second installment is based on the expected liability for the current accounting period now what will happen is that see you will determine that you know obviously when you are in the seventh month and you are paying your first liability 1 right Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So you are in your seventh month. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So over here, you are paying your corporation tax liability. Yes or no? But do you know how much is to be paid in the seventh month? All the chartered accountants. Do you remember there is a concept of advance tax? Yes, sir. Advanced tax. Remember, Manan must be remembering because he's already into practice. Yes, sir. Even people who've done CA inter, they also know. <coughs> Now, how do you determine the advanced tax amount? How do you determine the advance tax amount? That how much has to be paid? So similarly, this will be based on the installment is going to be based on based on expected T T T. This installment will be based on expected TTP. <coughs> Now, if the amount paid in installments at the end of say sixteenth month, amount paid in installments is less than amount due, then what will happen? Yes. What will happen? Tell me. If the amount that you no, why no advance tax? If the amount that you are paying in installment is less now, later on you find that oh my god, that liability was too much, and I was paying less. I was expecting lesser corporation tax. So then, government is going to HMRC or whatever you can ask them. you can call them whatever you want so government will charge yes do you pay interest on advance tax 234 abc <laughs> 234 a and b not c government will pay government will collect Interest, but sir, from which date 
this interest will be collected <coughs> from due date from due date to the date of payment okay so from the due date till you make this excess payment or whatever your interest is going to be collected but but if i just make one change and what i do is <laughs> if you are if you paid more then what should happen then there is a refund yes or no then refund yes sir then this is a clear case of sir refund but will this refund have interest also so in uk tax this is known as repayment will make repayment or you also call it refund along with interest but this interest will run from which date to which date will it run from due date will it run from due date this interest from date of actual payment till date of refund till you are refunded till the date of refund so so in case of interest when you have to pay to government government will charge interest from due date not when you have actually paid but when government has to pay you interest they will pay interest from the day when you have actually paid okay is that clear yes the government is always going to be <coughs> bias towards their own revenue they will always take more than they give government always takes more but you know these rich people they know how to bend the rules rich people don't break the rules they will always bend the rules in their favor that is why you will always see that they will be paying the least amount of tax in fact warren buffett admitted to the fact that he pays less tax compared to his own secretary so corporations all over the world pay very less tax <coughs> okay yes now you have to produce an accurate forecast you'll normally be able to obtain a refund if you subsequently find that installments have been overpaid interest will be charged or paid based on the actual tax due as per the last final when you submit the tax return yes they take dividend as income right and they take a what they do is actually <clears throat> people all around the world all around the world what they do is <laughs> that you know they will hold say shares worth 10 million 10 million 
dollars. Okay, suppose or ten billion dollars. Ultra rich, we are talking. Ultra rich, super rich. Suppose they are having shares worth ten billion dollars. Do you think they will sell these shares? The moment they sell, what will they attract? They sell, they will attract capital gain. They will not do this. They will take a loan against these shares. Suppose they want two billion or hundred ten million. They will take a loan of ten million. Loan. They will do whatever they wish to do with this. <laughs> right. They'll do whatever they wish to do with it. Whatever interest they pay on this amount, say seven percent interest they are paying or ten percent interest they are paying. How much is the ten percent interest? One million. One million is the interest, and this is a deduction from income. This is a deduction from income from this 10 million they will go buy a yacht yeah and this deduction is from income so people all over the world are doing this okay now by the 14 day 7 10 13 and 6 16. You have to make your installment payment. So we'll move on. Let's take a small break. Come back and then start the restart. Is it okay? Can we take a break? Yes. Okay. Are you all there? Everyone, are you there? moving on to so sometimes there is also an exception right so there are two exceptions mainly one is for companies where the tax liability is less than 10000 pounds or if the uh, accounting period is short then this amount will be prorated so most of the places you will see the thresholds and amounts will be prorated for shorter accounting periods right so there are two exceptions to this installment payments one is if your corporate liability tax liability is less than 10000 or company has become large during the ap <coughs> but two conditions must be fulfilled if you become large during the ap first of all you were not large for the previous ap and your augmented profit for ap does not exceed 10 million right and if there is a 51% group company or ap then that has to be this 10 million will also be prorated or reduced or whatever right so two exceptions two exceptions what are the exceptions sir sir what are the exceptions two exceptions one is that your liability is less than 10000 pounds number 2 is that your <coughs> so liability is less than 10000 pounds number 2 is that you become large in this ap but you were not large in the previous ap company becomes large in this ap there are further two conditions not large in previous ap in the previous ap you are not large company and so the, both these conditions must be fulfilled your augmented profits your augmented profits for the ap should not exceed 10 million for the ap are less than 10 million pounds okay so these two are the ex conditions for the exception first first exception is liability 
second is that you have become ap in this year provided you are not an ap large ap in previous ap <laughs> you have become large this year provided you are not large in the previous ap and your augmented profit in this ap is not greater than 10 million pounds the moment it exceeds 10 million pounds we are going to have to take you as a large company okay is that clear yes is that clear because now the next thing is that you have to do a question on this <coughs> let's move on and do a question on this two minutes tax liability liability is tax liability not total liability tax liability okay So I'm bringing a question to you, and you can do this one. Okay. Tax liability, which is corporation tax liability. Corporation tax liability, ten thousand. Corporation tax liability, beta. In the previous year. Okay. Can you see the question, all of you? Can you guys see the question? Okay, start doing this one on the basis of information that you have till now. Please start. How much time do you need for this one? Okay, for twenty twenty one liability paid on. So now they're saying QPLC is a single company with no fifty one percent group company. It's very good. On first of February twenty twenty one, QPLC estimates that its taxable total profits will be twenty four two point four million. For the year thirty first October twenty twenty one, very good. Taxable profits for the year thirty first October twenty twenty previous year were one point seven million. Okay, very good. And twenty nineteen was one point two million. So twenty nineteen in the previous year it is not an AP. It becomes a large in the previous AP. It is not a large company. It becomes a large company in twenty twenty. Right? Yes or no? And its augmented profit for this year is not greater than ten million. For twenty twenty, it's not greater than ten million. So for twenty nineteen, <throat> so for twenty twenty, it is not a large company. For twenty twenty one, it's a large company. <coughs> Now, my profits are so corporation tax liability. My corporation tax liability is. How much? Twenty twenty 
So it is 1.7 into 19% and then and then 2.4 million 24 lakh into 19 percent so 4 lakh 56 thousand this will be paid after paid on which date nine months so when is nine months after 31st october 2020 november december january february march april may june july paid on 1st of august 2021 yes to be paid by 1st of august 2021 not on but to be paid by to be paid by 1st of august number 2 Number two, to be paid in installments. So four installments, it, it needs to be paid. Yes. Now, a very valid question was asked, I think by Munna that what if large companies have a short AP? So there is a different concept for that. We'll do that, but not right now. In a while, we'll do that. <clears throat> So first of all, prepared installment. So first installment, first installment, second installment, third installment, and then fourth installment. So how much is to be paid? Okay. What is the date? What is the date? First is seventh month. So what is, when is the seventh month? November, December, January, February, March, April, May. So first is first of May, which is 14th of May. Then seventh. Then 10th month, May, June, July, August. Then 14th of August. August. Then 7th, 10th, 13th and 16th. 13th month is November. How come March 22? And then 14th of February. <clears throat> Munna, how are you getting March 22? 
No, this is to be paid by August. So this is 2020, first August 2021. Now 2021. So this will be 14th May 2022. Seventh month, no. November, December, Jan, Feb, March, April, and May. So 14th May. You'll have to take from the end of what is the end starting period? First of 31st for 31st October 2021. Sorry, 21. Again, 14th of August 2021. 2021. And then lastly, 2022. Yes. So all those who have nothing else to do on 14th of February, you can also go and deposit the fourth installment for your company. Right? Is this clear? No problem. Yes. Is it clear, everyone? Uh, CS or B's answer is absolutely right. Okay. Now the next part that we are going to do is short accounting period. So Munna's question is absolutely correct. That sir, what will happen if there is a short accounting period for a group, for a large company, if there is a short accounting period, what will happen then sir? How will we, so the only difference that will come will be the amount of the installment. So you'll have to calculate the amount of the installment. Let us see. Now, see for a large company. If your accounting period is less than 12 months, what do you do? Your first installment is same 14th day of seventh month after the start of the AP. Subsequent installment, because then you cannot go three months, then 30. 10th and then 30th and whatever. So then it will be due at three monthly intervals until the date of the last installment. Now, how do we reach the last installment? <clears throat> so last installment is 14th day of the fourth month after the end of accounting period, which means that if your accounting periods end ends on 31st of March, right? So let us see. If your AP ends on 31st of March <coughs> and you started on say 1st of, uh, say 1st of June or 1st of July and your AP ends on 31st of March. So your first installment is when quickly tell me, quickly tell me when is your first installment? Seventh month, 14th day of seventh month. Calculate quickly. So July, August, July, July, August, September, October, November, December. So 14th of Jan will be your first installment. 14th of January, then every three months. So after 14 months, 14 Jan, then <coughs> yes, after 14 Jan, three months, so Jan to Feb, Feb to March, March to April, then 14th of April, then fourth month from the end. 
so from 31st march you have to find fourth month so april may june so last installment will be july so last installment is going to be 14th of july this is your last installment right what are they saying that subsequent installments are due at three monthly intervals thereafter until the date of the last installment now after 14th april do you have a three monthly <coughs> so april to may may to june june to july so again automatically it becomes july yes this is the last installment which is four months from this <coughs> is this clear or do you want me to explain once more yes so this is first installment this is number 2 right this is first installment this is second installment and this is last installment which means seventh month then every 3 months so 14 jan jan to Ma jan to feb feb to march march to april so second installment is april then automatically this would fall on this date but we will take from 4 months so last installment is 4 months okay last installment is 4 months from the end of the year accounting period right last is from the fourth month from the end of the accounting period is that clear all of you surbhi manan <coughs> Surbhi, Manan, and Munna. Clear. What about the others? Now, for a counting period of three months or less, <coughs> sir, no. Yes, tell me. Tell me, Surbhi. Sir, first installment is seventh month. Why? Why can it not be the last installment? Fourteenth day of the fourth month after the end of the AP. What is the fourth month after the end of AP? Thirty-first March is your end of AP. Yes or no? This is your end of AP or no? What is the fourth month? So April, May, June, July, fourteenth day of the fourth month. This is what fourteenth day of the fourth month. हाँ तो दिस इज थर्ड इंस्टॉलमेंट डेट बट बिकॉज योर नंबर ऑफ योर एपी इज अ शॉर्टर एपी इट्स नॉट अ ट्वेल्व मंथ एपी इफ हैड इट बीन अ ट्वेल्व मंथ एपी फोर्टींथ ऑफ जुलाई नो अप्रैल मे जून जुलाई अगस्त सेप्टेम्बर अक्टूबर फोर्टींथ ऑफ अक्टूबर वुड हैव बीन योर फर्स्ट इंस्टॉलमेंट इट्स नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट नेसेसरी दैट यू हैव थ्री इंस्टॉलमेंट योर फर्स्ट इंस्टॉलमेंट इज Fourteenth day. Subsequent is every three months. They don't say that it has to be minimum these this these many installment. No. <clears throat> okay.
Yes. Clear? <coughs> Is that clear? Now, if you have an accounting period, which is three months or less than three months, then if you apply the above rules, what will happen? It will result in the date of the first installment being later than the last installment. So first installment has to be on 14th day of the seventh month <coughs> and last installment has to be 14th day of the fourth month after end of AP. So your first installment, if it is less than say, if it's a two month AP, when is your last installment? Suppose your AP is just two months, which means that you started on 1st of February and you end on 31st of March. When is your last installment? Yes. Fourth month after the end of AP. So April, May, June, July, 14th of July. But when is your first, <laughs> when is your first installment? Seventh month. When is the seventh month? February, March, April, May, June, July, and August. It's going to be 14th of August. <clears throat> is it a problem or not? Yes. Is it a problem or not? This is a problem. And that is why they come up with a solution, right? Solution is that full tax due for the accounting period is due on the date of the last installment, which is 14th day of the fourth month. So if it's a short AP, if it's a short AP less than three months or three months, then the entire tax will be paid on the 14th day of the fourth month. How do you calculate? the amount of each installment. So estimated liability into N upon length of the AP where N is three for a full quarterly installment and N is two or one for the last installment if period since the previous installment is less than three months. Sir, what does this mean? This means if you have a full three month period, right? Suppose you have, uh, <clears throat> Suppose you have like full three months, right? So it's a full period. So what you'll do and suppose 10 million is your liability, 10 million multiplied by N, which is three months because it's a full quarterly installment. So three upon suppose it's a, uh, six, six month AP. Okay. <laughs> six months AP. So it's a short AP three by six, which is. 5 million you have to pay right for each of the installment. But suppose <coughs> the period since the last installment. So if we look at this one more, so suppose they are saying that N is equal to two or one for the last installment, if the period since the previous installment is less than three months. So if you've paid the previous installment, but the last installment has to be less than three months, right? It, your, the difference is less than three months. Then what do you do? So you take N as N equal to less. So this can be a case where your AP is say five months, which means from 1st of July. So July, August, September, October, November to first of November, right? Yes. So after November, when do you need to pay the, <coughs> when do you have to pay the last installment? So November, November, December, January and 14th of February is your last installment. 
14th of February is your last installment. Yes or no? When will be your first installment? When will be your first installment? Seventh month. When is your first installment? July, August, September, October, November, December, and January. So 14th of January. 14th of January will be your first installment. How many months have are there between first and the last installment? Yes. 14 January. So N is equal to one. In that case, you will take n is equal to one. Is that clear? Or if it's a four month AP, so then n is equal to two. Is that clear? Everywhere. In this case, n is equal to one because it's just one month. <coughs> or if another example, I can give you. Let me give you another example. Surbi, is this clear? Little bit. Okay. Suppose we have a four month AP, four months AP from 1st of July. From 1st of July, we have a four month AP, July, August, September, October, 1st of October. No. Third, first of September, 30th of October, right? 30th of October, 30th, October is third. July, August, September, October, which is 31st of October. Okay. When is your first installment due? When is your first installment due? Tell me now. From seventh month, so July, August, September, first, not first Jan, 14th of Jan, 14th of January. When is your last installment due? <coughs> November, December, January, February. When is your last installment due? Fourteenth of February. What is the duration of this? One month. So your n is equal to one. Again, suppose we have a six months AP. Six month AP. Did we take six month AP? July to July, August, September, October, November. We have a six month AP. So first July to July, August, 31st of December. Right? When is the first, first installment due? 14th of January. When is the last installment due? The last installment is due on Jan, Feb, March, April, 14th of April. How many months are there? So N is equal to three months.
if it's a five month ap so july august september october november it should have been <coughs> 30th of november your first installment is due by this and your last will be fourth month so december january february march no this is not february this is march 14th of march so in this case n is equal to how many months two months so july august september october november so five month ap then n is equal to two months otherwise n is one month and here n is three months is that clear yes so we manan and all of the other guys munna नाइन मंथ एपी नाइन मंथ एपी फर्स्ट ऑफ जुलाई ओके लेट्स टेक फर्स्ट ऑफ अप्रैल नाइन मंथ एपी मींस अप्रैल मई जून जुलाई अगस्त सितंबर अक्टूबर नवंबर दिसंबर Thirty first of December. So this this is a nine month AP. When is the seventh month? When is the seventh month? Fourteenth of October. October. April, May, June, July, August, September, October. Right. When is the last last installment? Last is fourteenth of April. So in this case, so n is equal to three only. N is equal to three only. Right. Is that clear? Surbi, is this clear or not? <coughs> Because the time between the Previous installment and the last installment. So next installment will be tenth month. Tenth month is when? Tenth month is when? First of January. Fourteenth of January. Fourteenth of January. So fourteen January to April. There is three months, right? Jan to Feb, Feb to March, March to April. So there is still three months between last installment. So n will be equal to three. Clear? Very good. Let's be back in ten minutes. Okay. Let's take a ten and be back. Uh, if you remember, we had one question. Part B of the question. How many of you have done? Part B of this question. Part B.
on july okay try giving me an answer for this and we'll be back in 10 minutes thank you Okay, so the answer to part B if they revise their forecast to the forecast is revised to twenty six lakh forty. Thousand, then CT liability is going to be twenty six like forty thousand into nineteen percent. So that is five lakh one thousand six hundred. Quarterly payment is going to be. Quarterly payment will be how much divided by four? One two five four hundred. Till now it used to be one one four triple zero. So what is the excess per month? Eleven thousand four hundred per per like per installment. For May it is already paid because they have revised when in July. So after after May, payment will be in August. So there will be interest will be charged. Interest will be charged on on 
Yes. Okay. One more question I'm going to give you. So it will be paid along with the last installment. Along with the last installment. Okay. One more question. Small question. Please do this. Take whatever time, two, three minutes and do this.
eight months ended 31st December 2020, which means that the first month is May, then June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Okay. Yes, sir. Number and December. So your first installment will be due on 14 November, right? Second will be due on 14, then December, January, February, the 14th of February, second, and then your last installment will be due four will be due four months after this. So January to April, ready March and then April. So the last installment will be due on 14th of April. Now, how much are you going to pay? So what is the difference? This is three months, right? So you're going to pay whatever is the liability multiplied by three upon eight, three upon eight. And then lastly, from February to March and March to April, just two months are there. So into two by eight, right? Yes. Is that clear? Very good. Now the next part is on interest. I've already told you about the interest part. So late payment interest runs from, so if you are, if you are paying late, so from normal due date to the date of payment, right? Good part is that you can deduct this interest from your interest income in the computation, which means that you can reduce, you can have a deduction of this interest, right? If you are making a repayment, so repayment will be from the later of day of the original due date or actual date of payment. So whenever, so I told you that, you know, revenue will never take a loss. So they will say that, okay, due date or actual date. Actual date is after the due date. So we will pay you from the actual date of payment to the date of the repayment. Clear. Yes. Is that clear? Now interest is taxable and included interest income. If you're getting in any interest, so this is, this will be included in the interest income in the corporation tax computation. Okay. This is again important that this will be included when, whenever we are doing your corporation tax computation, this interest is taxable. Okay. Yes. Is that clear? Very good. Now, if there is a group company <coughs> and that is a large company, right? At least one group company pays corporation tax by quarterly installment, which means it's a la large company. So what is the effect of having one large company? So one group company pays quarterly installment of corporation tax on behalf of the group. This can save you interest as overpayments are effectively netted off against underpayments. So if some other company within the group is making an underpayment and you are making an overpayment, so it can be netted off. 
without a group pay arrangement so if there is no group payment arrangement that is one company pays for the entire group if this is not there interest charge or under payments is likely to be more than the interest received on over payment so if you make more payments you receive an interest your interest charge will be higher on the under payment why sir because then you are not paying quarterly so then your interest will be much higher so you are paying after 9 months from the end of the ap however each company must still prepare a separate corporation tax computation at the end of the ap clear yes is this clear simple sir one company pay can pay for the entire group right yes is this clear would you guys want to go through once whatever we have done till now would you want to read whatever we have done till now yes or no <coughs> no you don't want to you don't want to go through this these things all clear very good next is impact of taxation so this is actually the advisory part so whenever you are appearing for atx paper think of yourself as an advisor right so whenever you are considering tax payment you must look at your cash flows right so when you change to quarterly installments for the first time your cash flows are going to be affected when you change for the first time your cash flows are going to be affected okay now next is self assessment <coughs> so what is self assessment self assessment basically means that nobody will come to your office to tell you that this is your income tax you will have to it is compulsory for large companies if you are a large company it is compulsory but if you are covered by exception then you can avoid it okay now you have to calculate your own corporation tax liability <coughs> give a return within 12 months after the end of the period of account if there is any corporation tax due then within 9 month or quarterly installment system now given the timing many companies will aim to complete the self assessment tax return prior to normal 9 month deadline to enable them to pay an accurate amount of tax and avoid interest <laughs> charges on underpaid tax what this means is that mostly companies would be preparing their self assessment much much earlier than 9 months so if this is 1st of april 31st of march what is 9 months from this number of the november december 31st of december plus one day so 1st of january so companies would want to <coughs> prepare their returns much earlier so that any underpaid tax they can avoid the interest okay now company coming within the scope of corporation tax for the first time so the first time you come in the scope of corporation tax you have to notify hmrc when its first accounting period begins within 3 months of the start of your accounting period okay so you are the first time when you come within the scope of corporation tax <coughs> so generally you will receive a notice also but if you do not receive a notice right then you are required to notify hmrc if you have income chargeable income or chargeable gains on which any tax is due even if you don't receive a notice generally companies will receive a notice that 
your tax is due or your you are chargeable your income is chargeable you or you have chargeable gain even if it's not there you have to notify the hmrc time limit for notifying the hmrc of chargeability is from end of the accounting period in which the liability arises if you don't notify the hmrc then standard penalty may be imposed for failure to notify the hmrc <laughs> the first time you come in the scope within 3 months of your start right but chargeability you have to notify the period starts from the end of the accounting period in which the liability arises now coming to your self assessment tax return so you have to give a self assessment tax return by the later of 12 months at as at the end of ap or 3 months after issue, if you've got the got a notice to file a return <coughs> then the tax return has to be submitted within 3 months is that clear yes you have it must contain all the information required to calculate the profit also it should include a self assessment of the corporation tax payable and the return has to be submitted online right company has to submit a copy of the financial accounts together with self assessment tax return okay you have to give a copy of your financial accounts as well <laughs> is that clear you have to submit return later of 12 months or from your ap or 3 months after issue of notice is that clear that is what i was about to say so if this is your ap then 9 months is 31st of december yes but if you receive a notice say by 1st of july then within 3 months so for july august and september by 30th of september you have to submit the return so later of <coughs> submitted by the later of 12 months after end of the accounting period or 3 months after the issue of the notice so must be submitted by the later of so if you get notice over here you can submit by 31st december okay whatever is later you can submit if you suppose you get notice by so your ap is 1st of april to 31st of march yes if you have notified no that is not chargeability you have to notify that you have come within the ambit of corporation tax you have to still file a return so 12 months will be 31st of december but suppose you get a notice on 1st of november then what happens what is your then due date of return later of 3 months from notice so which is november december and january so which is 31st of january 31st of january <coughs> normal due date is 9 months na 12 months after the end of okay sorry 12 months what is 12 months 31st of march this is 31st of march suppose you get a notice on 1st of february 1st february you got a notice so then when do you need to submit february march and april so 31st of april 
30th April, sorry. No, 30th April. To submit by 30th of April. Okay. So it has to be later of 12 months after the date of accounting period, or if you received a notice, then three months after the issue of the notice. Okay. This is also not right. So it is going to be 31st of December. But if you receive a notice on 1st of July, then also it's going to be 31st of December because 1st July to three months later is 12 months, which is 31st of March. Sorry, 31st of March. March. 12, within 12 months, you have to file the return and this form has to be submitted. Form C 600. Okay. Ah, sell if it's a self assessment case for not for companies, this is corporation tax. If it is income tax for individuals, it is the date of filing is 31st of January <coughs> for individuals. It is 31st of January. The date of due date of payment of tax and return is 31st of January. Sixth April is the uh, financial year of uh, the tax year. Okay. Is that clear? So be. Very good. Now this is determination assessment. Okay. Do you remember best judgment? Remember best judgment. What was best judgment? Section 144. Yes. Remember section 144. 144 was best judgment, right? Muna, have you studied Indian income tax? <clears throat> so Best judgment is 144 if I'm not wrong. Surbhi will be able to tell me. Surbhi Manan. Is Manan there? No, sir. Okay. So basically determination assessment says that if you are not going to file your, give your self-assessment, then HMRC has the power to decide your self-assessment. And it will be treated as if this self assessment you have given. And after that, if you actually some, there is no, uh, there is no appeal against this determination assessment. So because companies can deliberately delay, which is SMR, HMRC does not want. So then HMRC will determine the corporation tax due by <coughs> issuing a determination assessment. So there is no right of appeal also against a determination assessment. Instead, you have to replace this determination assessment with your actual self-assessment return. Okay. Determination assessment can be raised by HMRC at any time within three years of the filing date. That is four years from the end of period of account, because what is your date of filing? 12 months. So determination assessment is time for determination assessment is three years from the date of filing, which is again, four years from your end of period of account.
तो फर्स्ट ऑफ अप्रैल थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ मार्च ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी थ्री सो एच एम आर सी ऑफ फोर इयर्स फ्रॉम दिस डेट एंड थ्री इयर्स फ्रॉम दिस डेट दैट इज थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ मार्च ट्वेंटी फोर दिस इज द डेट वेन यूर नीड टू फाइल योर रिटर्न If you don't, then it has got three years to make your determination assessment. Okay, and there is no appeal against this. You can only replace it with a self-assessment return. That is it. ओके ओके यू कैन क्विकली गो थ्रू दिस टेक टू मिनट्स कैन गो थ्रू दिस पार्ट वट एवर वीव डन प्लीज गो थ्रू दिस non submission yes you can say that on non submission of return they can do your discovery assessment no even then you have to give a return even if the payment is made and you don't submit a return how will the hmrc know what was your liability just making payment is not a proof of liability <clears throat> you have to give a return
This one. Surbi. So again, very, very simple. Whenever you come within the scope of corporation tax for the first time to notify the HMRC within three months of your, of the start of your first AP. If you receive a notice, right, that you are, you need to file a corporation tax return, <clears throat> right? You need to notify HMRC if you have income chargeable, income or chargeable gains on which taxes due. Right, you have to tell the HMRC if you receive a notice to file a tax return. Right, the time limit for notifying of chargeability that are you chargeable or not is from the end of the accounting period. Okay, and then penalty is there if you don't if you fail to notify. This is a simple procedural thing. Firstly, when you come within the ambit within the scope of corporation tax, you have to tell within three months of the start of your first accounting period. Okay. If the, then you are not in corporation tax, you are not in the scope of corporation tax. There is no income. That's what they're saying. The first time you come in the scope of corporation tax, you notify HMRC. That is what they're saying. How would you they know if you have income, you have got profits, right? And that profits are chargeable, obviously. There is no threshold limit that, you know, below this, you don't have to pay. There's no threshold. The first time you incur profits, you have to notify the HMRC. You're not within the ambit, so don't need to file return. If the income is nil, you don't need to file return. So when, when do you come within the scope of your, we did this yesterday. <laughs> when you start trading, that is when you come within the scope. Chargeable gain is capital gain. Surbi, chargeable. You are a chartered accountant. Chargeable gain is capital gain. Okay. Okay, guys, shall we? So I'll see you then next time. Next week till then. Bye bye. Take care. Namaskar. Thank you. Determination assessment till this point we have done. So I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Bye bye.
let me just share all the notes with you for today thank you bye bye